Why is the West locked in by single crystal technology? What's the secret behind China's reverse play? The turbine blade, the heart of the aero engine that the US and Russia have monopolized for half a century, has been surprisingly manufactured by China using glass. Even more astonishing, this component's high temperature resistance is on par with the West's prohibitively expensive single crystal blades, but its cost has been slashed to one quarter. It is already in mass production. How did China achieve this feat that even NASA dared not attempt? In reality, this glass isn't true glass. It's a metallic lump called amorphous alloy, or bulk metallic glass, BMG. You can think of traditional single crystal blades as meticulously stacked. Atomic brick buildings, where every brick must be perfectly aligned, making them costly and fragile. China's new material is an atomic stew frozen solid, which appears disordered but is ten times stronger than the brick structure. It's like unbreakable tempered glass but with the toughness of metal. In the competitive arena of core aero engine components, Chinese engineers are writing a stunning story of reverse engineering. Using traditional single crystal technology, it takes the West a grueling 90 days of precision forging and repeated debugging to produce a single aero engine blade, and even with such a high time investment, the yield rate maxes out at only 85%. China's independently developed amorphous alloy blade technology is a disruptive breakthrough. Utilizing a proprietary rapid forming process, the production line can stably output dozens of high performance blades daily, boosting efficiency nearly a hundredfold. In terms of extreme performance metrics, the amorphous blade shows a crushing advantage. Under normal conditions, it maintains structural integrity in the inferno of 1100 ring operator C heat far exceeding the heat resistance standards of Western equivalents. Lab data even suggests its ultimate temperature tolerance can reach 1500 ring operator C, a figure that surpasses the boasted blade performance of the Russian PD-14 engine. What's more amazing is that the manufacturing cost for this Chinese blade, which embodies cutting-edge technology, is only 100,000 renminbi, $13,700, less than one-tenth of the imported product's price tag of 1.12 million renminbi, $153,600. This technological storm, created by China, has not only reshaped the cost structure of the aero engine industry but has also proven the strength of intelligent manufacturing in China. In the crucial core technology race, China is transforming from a follower into a leader. Now let's explore. Why is the West locked in by single crystal technology? What's the secret behind China's reverse play? Is the global aviation industry on the verge of a massive shift? Hi. Has China lifted the lid on the West's monopoly coffin? For nearly 60 years, General Electric G in the US and Rolls-Royce RR in the UK have dominated turbine blade technology, cultivating a single crystal cult. They argued that only single crystal blades which eliminate all grain boundaries, could withstand the hellish temperatures inside the engine. To maintain this monopoly, they treated the core engine as a black box. Even Francis Snecma had to sign a non-disclosure agreement for cooperation, and the U.S. Department of Defense once withheld technology export on national security grounds. G's leap engine blades have a temperature resistance of 1750 ring operator C but manufacturing one involves dozens of steps like directional solidification and plasma spraying, with a mere 85% yield rate. Rolls-Royce is even more extreme. The stage one blades for a single engine can cost 100 million renminbi to procure and are bundled with mandatory maintenance services. In the R&D competition for aero engine blade materials, the world was once trapped in a fierce single crystal arms race. Countries poured vast resources into improving single crystal materials to boost engine performance. However, Chinese research teams chose an alternative path, setting their sights on amorphous alloys. First discovered in the U.S. in 1959, amorphous alloys were once hailed as the future of materials science due to their unique microstructure and superior properties. Yet, due to technical bottlenecks like challenging forming processes and difficulty controlling performance stability, for a long time, their application was limited to non-critical parts like Mars rover gears. 
Even the technologically powerful NASA only dared to use them sparingly on Mars exploration equipment. No one internationally had ever attempted to apply them to the high-risk, high-demand field of aero engines. But undeterred by the challenges, Chinese researchers successfully overcame the technical hurdles for applying amorphous alloys and aero engines through years of dedicated research. From lab R&D to engineering application, from sample trials to large-scale mass production, every step embodies the wisdom and sweat of the scientific workers. In contrast, the Chinese aero engine team took an alternative path with a clean slate mindset. While the West obsessed over improving the creep performance of single crystal alloys, Chinese scientists targeted the disruptive route of ceramic matrix composites, CMC. From solving the purity bottleneck of silicon carbide fibers in the lab to establishing the world's first thousand-ton level composite material mass production line, they achieved autonomous control over the entire chain, from raw material to finished product, in just a decade. At the 2023 Zhuhai Airshow, a turbofan engine equipped with domestically produced CMC blades made a stunning debut. Its high temperature performance was 40% higher than traditional materials, shattering a 30-year technical blockade by the West in one stroke. This comeback story confirms a truth. The secret to breaking core technologies is never to chase tirelessly on the track defined by the competitor, but to possess the boldness to achieve a lane change overtake and open a new battleground. While Western companies attempted to use patent lawsuits to slow down China's technological progress, we achieved a dimensional reduction strike through original innovation in the new materials sector. This wisdom of reverse innovation has not only reshaped the global aero engine industry landscape but also revealed the ultimate law for breaking technical monopolies. Only by stepping outside the existing paradigm can a follower transform into a leader and a latecomer achieve a successful bypass. 2. 1.12 million versus 100,000. China rips off the price cloak. Shanghai University once calculated that an imported single crystal blade, after being passed through distributors, could sell for 1.12 million renminbi, $153,600, while the cost of a self-developed Chinese single crystal blade was 100,000 renminbi, $13,700. Now, with the mass production of amorphous blades, the cost has been driven even lower. In contrast, Russia, which finally broke through single crystal technology with a temperature resistance of 1700 ring operator C, close to international levels, only achieves a 60% yield rate, 25 percentage points lower than G's. This prevents them from significantly lowering costs. As a result, Although the PD-14 engine's unit price of 12 million renminbi is cheaper than Pratt & Whitney's, the maintenance costs are too high, making the leasing price of the MS-21 airliner 10% higher than the A320neo. The West is even more aggressive, exploiting its monopoly for exorbitant pricing. China previously paid over a billion RMB for one gas turbine, with the blades alone accounting for nearly one-tenth of the cost. They also enforce technology blockades, refusing to transfer core processes, leaving Chinese power plants as easy targets. The mass production of China's amorphous blades is akin to giving the global aviation industry a price reduction shot, finally offering a second option to smaller countries long held hostage by the West. Price monopoly has always been the cloak for technological hegemony. Looking back at the development history of the aero engine blade market, Western companies leveraged their first-mover technological advantage to construct an impenetrable technological wall. From patent blockades to standard setting, from core process secrecy to key equipment embargoes, they simultaneously championed marketization and free competition while selling aero engine blades globally at sky-high prices, several times their cost. A single high-end single crystal blade was once priced up to several million US dollars. This pricing fraud essentially treated developing nations as economic colonies, wantonly extracting technology dividends. The successful mass production of amorphous blades by Chinese research teams after over a decade of dedicated work brings more than just a disruption to the cost structure. Data shows that before the mass production of the domestic amorphous blade, Chinese aerospace companies were paying up to $3 million per imported blade. 
the domestically produced product with comparable performance will now press the price down to a mere one-tenth of the imported cost. The deeper significance is that this breakthrough has thoroughly torn open the price black hole in the global high-end manufacturing sector, shattering the mode of profiteering constructed by Western companies through technological monopoly. When sky-high blades transform into affordable quality goods, AeroEngine R&D costs drop significantly, enabling small and medium-sized airlines to escape the shackles of exorbitant parts costs, and more developing countries' aviation industries welcome a window for technological upgrading. This shift from minority monopoly to universal benefit and sharing has not only promoted the popularization of global aviation technology, but also showcased China's responsibility in high-end manufacturing to let technology serve humanity, pioneering a new paradigm for global technological cooperation and industrial upgrading. 3. It's not luck. It's a clue China planted 40 years ago. Some suggest China got lucky, but the truth is it was a major move developed over 40 years. Amorphous alloy R&D began in the 1970s. At the time, the US, Japan, and the Soviet Union monopolized the technology and Chinese researchers started testing with samples weighing mere grams. What about the West? The U.S. poured its funding into fundamental research, but application exploration lagged. After key scientists in Japan and Europe retired, they had no successors, and the technology gradually fell behind. The key breakthrough lies in the entropy regulation, technology. Rapid solidification prevents the molten metal from having time to crystallize, maintaining an atomic amorphous state. This is like instantly freezing hot molten iron, locking in the high temperature performance. NASA had long discovered that amorphous alloys resist radiation and temperature changes but were stuck at the critical size. Problem. Small parts were feasible, but a 30 centimeters long blade was not. China directly expanded the critical size from the micrometer to the centimeter level and solved the forming issue. They use precision manufacturing for a single-step forming process, which is far simpler than the West's single crystal. Machining plus welding process. How can this be luck? It is the inevitable result of 10 years of forging a single sword. The West often assumes Chinese technology is copied, but fails to see the decades-long clues we've laid in the new materials sector. Two-thirds of the world's amorphous alloy researchers are in China and we have discovered 28 of the 36 known bulk metallic glasses. This deep accumulation in fundamental research is the confidence behind reverse innovation. So-called disruption is always the victory of long-termism over short-sightedness. This is a powerful narrative of technological rivalry and breakthrough. Does this translation capture the tone and technical details you were looking for?